So in the last video, we set up the Starlink out in a rural location, but it was outside of Starlink's cell coverage. In this video, I actually found a place on my roof that's able to see most of the northern sky, but not all of the northern sky. So hopefully that'll be good enough. I actually tested Dishy in my yard yesterday and made sure that it got a connection. So I know that it can get a connection in this area where my house is. But today we're gonna mount it on the roof. So SpaceX has some instructions that basically say, put this on your roof and then it starts working. But there's actually a lot of little details in there that, that they might miss. Uh, one detail is you, you have this cable that's connected directly to the dish. And technically you could cut into it and splice it and uh, run it in your building that way. But that's probably not supported under warranty. And um, I'm guessing they have this for rule here for some reason or another. So I don't want to do that. Uh, but that creates a problem because like with cable, uh, with RG6 cable or with Cat5 or Cat6 cable, uh, the cable can go through a pretty small hole pretty easily. But when you got this guy, you got this end connector here that's actually a little larger than a normal uh, RJ45 connector because of this sheath. And you have this ferrule, which is just over three quarters of an inch. So I drilled two holes, three quarters of an inch and seven eighths of an inch. And you can see if I do the three quarter inch hole into the house, it kind of squeezes, but it's not gonna go through unless I jammed it in there and probably broke it. So I'm gonna have to go with a 7 8 inch hole into the house so that I can get this through uh, and then caulk that up afterwards. We're gonna use this volcano mount. Then the volcano mount is meant to go on top of your roof and you put it on a surface that's 40 degrees or less. I have a couple extra things that I added to the kit that I think SpaceX would be nice if they included uh, for safety reasons. Um, so it comes with the instruction manual. In the instruction manual, let's see, it, uh, it basically says you'll need a stud finder, a pencil, and a drill and a socket wrench, but you're actually gonna need a couple more things if you wanna make this an easy install. And it also comes with some cable clips and a little bag that I'll show you later. So it comes with all these parts, but the main thing is this, and this is just a stand that, you'll, that I'll put on the roof like this, and then I'll put Dishy into it, and Dishy should orient itself correctly, as long as you're under, I think, 40 degrees. So if you have a really steep roof, not gonna work. Can't do it on a wall either. You have to do it on a a more flat or a pitched roof. It also comes with these. Uh, this is flashing material and some of this has lead in it. So it says wear gloves. It'd be nice if they just included a couple gloves in the bag, but um, it's better better idea to not get lead all over your hands. These are the bolts that'll, that will hold it in. It comes with uh, four smaller bolts and then two lar large bolts. You're supposed to get it into a stud the problem is there's no stud in a roof that's this wide, so these bolts on the outside are actually gonna go into the roofing material and not into an actual stud that's part of the structure. So these two bolts will be the long ones that'll hold it in tight, and the other ones, I guess, will try to help it to stay a little stable. I haven't actually tested this ladder. Come with me and you'll be in a world of OSHA violation. All right, so I'm gonna need to find on the roof. And it's always fun working on a roof because you're on this steep angle. Come with me. I need to find where I need to put the stud. So I'm gonna put all my tools down so they're not stuck in my belt. And here's my stud finder. So I know that the overhang is over here and the stud finder should hopefully find, find a stud somewhere in here. Okay, so it thinks that there's a stud right in this area. I use this as a mark right here and we'll start making our marks for where we're gonna mount this thing. Uh, we're gonna mount this mount right under this edge maybe. We need a hole here. here. So we got our holes marked on the roof and I'm going to use my, I think this is five, uh, five thirty seconds or something like that. I don't remember exactly the size, but it's whatever size the manual calls for. Now this is always fun drilling a hole in your roof because every hole in your roof leads to a leak later on. Okay, 
so I see I see some uh, sawdust in there. That's good. That means I'm definitely in the wood. And here I might not see as much. I'm actually getting some sawdust there. That's good too. All right, so I'm gonna blow this out. Come with. Okay, so the next step is I'm gonna put these uh, these flashing pieces on, and there's two steps to this. The first step is to take a few of these little these little bundles, and I'm actually gonna mark next to each of these holes. I'm gonna mark. I'm gonna mark where the hole is so that I can find it in a little bit. All right, so this is extremely sticky, these things, from what I've heard online. And because of that, it's gonna be a little annoying getting this all stuck on. All right, so they want you to wad this up into kind of a ball. So that is what I'm gonna do here. Wad it up into a ball. Jam the ball into the whole spot. Okay. So that's one. So these are supposed to try to help keep water out of these holes. But there's no way after making a hole in a roof to guarantee that there will never be water. So just beware of that. That is why a lot of people will actually put pole mounts on the side of their house. I don't have a place that I can stick a pole mount that easily though. All right, so I'm gonna put this one up here. This is the second layer of flashing that will go just underneath the actual dishy. Get the second one out. Ah. All right, so I got those in. I'm gonna take off these gloves, which now have enough lead on them to make them illegal in California probably. Um, now, this is the tricky part because I don't know exactly where those holes are, but I'm gonna be pretty close at least. So I'm gonna stick this mount on and hopefully be pretty close and I'm gonna get two of these screws started at least. All right, so I got my ratchet wrench there which I'm gonna to use to hand tighten them, but to get them started, I'm gonna use my impact driver. Uh, this is another thing that's not in the instructions. Uh, these bits are extremely helpful for so many projects. I'm going from the impact driver chuck to, um, to a square driver, I don't know exactly what the name of this is, you can tell me in the comments. Go into there and then I can put any kind of uh, socket adapter onto it that I want to so that I can get these started. It's really hard to start these kind of bits by hand. So, yeah. All right, let's see if we can get this one in. All right, that one's in. Okay. We got four more. All right, so I got some flashing that came out on that one. So I'm gonna to switch to hand tightening and put that back up there so it doesn't slide off the roof. I'm gonna hand tighten them until they stop and then a quarter turn, I think the directions say. So I'm gonna hand tighten each one. Okay. I mean, the good thing about this is that if, it, if the uh, material's coming through, that means it is forming some sort of seal. Okay, I think we're good. I got the volcano mount installed. I'm gonna put all my tools back on, go back down. We're gonna bring Dishy up using the bag that SpaceX provided for safety so that I'm not just carrying it up with my arm. And we'll put Dishy in and then we're gonna run the cable down the roof line uh, on the underside in the eave to the side of the house. And uh, hopefully that'll work out. So SpaceX includes this little bag, which is really only good for one thing, carrying Dishy up onto the roof. You don't set Dishy down on the roof. There are probably two good reasons for that. One reason, if you set this on the roof, it'll scratch up this very nice surface, and uh, 
and that might cause interference. The other reason is if you have a roof like mine that I think is at 35 or 30 degree pitch, that'll just slide right off and fall into the grass. So yeah, don't set Dishy down on the roof. One of the things I don't like about the install is the fact that this cable is all attached. And because of that, you kind of have to bring the cable with you everywhere. And it's just awkward. And now, ugh, I'll go back up the ladder with my dishy backpack. This definitely throws your balance off a little bit. But it's a one-time deal. There's our mount. All happy as can be. And we got dishy up here. Ugh. Get dishy on, uh, like so. All right, I'm gonna take a short pause and admire my work. Whew. I'm going to try to gently get this over the side of the house in a way that does not completely tangle up this cable. All right, so there's dishy. So we got Dishy installed on the roof, and now the wire's coming down, and I need to secure the wire. There's a couple things that I'll need to do. Uh, SpaceX includes a box of these little wire clips. Um, it has a screw built into it, so I'll put this over the wire, and then I'll screw it into some sort of structure. Um, I'll probably have to screw it into some flashing on my house. Um, but I'm gonna put those up, and then once we get the cable tacked down, it'll be time to go into the house. SpaceX also didn't include ladders in their instruction manual, but you'll probably want some good ladders if you want to be able to do this safely. Pre-drill a hole, since I'm going through metal, makes it a little easier. Okay, and I'm using a quarter inch uh, bit here, if it would actually go on. All right, so I'm gonna move on down and we'll keep doing this. It's just awkward. Put those two things on top. It makes the weight distribution really hot, really annoying. Okay, so we'll do another one here. I hope all this work is for nothing. Please go ahead and subscribe so I can do these kind of things and pay for any medical bills for my back later on. Now we're getting on the slope too. Slopes always make everything a lot safer. Come with. Did you just use the drill with the hammer? Yeah. Drills are hammers when they need to be. There's a nail that was a little loose, so I'm rethinking my decision. I probably should have put it up here because you got solid wood. It would be easier. Yeah, I should have just done this. So I'm gonna pop these out redo them. These are the things you don't see in the official videos when somebody makes a mistake and has to go back and fix it. But that's why you subscribe to me. Come on, you dumb foot. There you go. There we go. Okay, that's better. And I'm using these black UV, UV resistant zip ties. I don't think anything in the world is completely UV resistant, but this should work okay for the purpose. I'm just gonna zip tie it so it doesn't let the slack out. It's always fun when the ladder is 
adjusting itself underneath you. We need to find a way to run this down the house. So again, this is where it would be so nice if the cable were detachable or spliceable because managing this kind of bundle of cable is just not my idea of a fun day. Okay, there we go. What looks most professional? That's the question. There's gotta be wood back there somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, that'll work. I found wood. I've seen worse. Okay, so the foundation wall I think is about eight inches thick, so it's like four inches on each side of this window, so uh, we'll say about eight inches. I measured in on the inside of the wall, uh, 22 inches to the point where I'm gonna go inside the house. So that's, that's around here. And then I measured up from the top of the foundation, so the brick is on top of the foundation layer. And then I need to go up five inches up from here, so uh, in this vicinity. So I don't wanna go into the mortar joint because that's not gonna be a very strong, um, strong hole that I make. And if I go into the mortar uh, with a seven eighths inch bit, it's gonna be chipping away at the bricks and it's not gonna look pretty. So I'm gonna go up a tiny bit more. I'll go right in this, this vicinity. And hopefully that's not gonna chip out the brick. Uh, we'll see. Um, but I actually asked Redshirt Jeff if I could borrow his rotary hammer to make light work of this. We'll see if that works out. You should always put in the battery after you put the bit in, just so that you don't accidentally, even with the safety on, slice your hand off. There we go. You can do it. Okay. This is a beefy bit, <laughs> 7 8 inch, like I said. Uh, we're going to go in through the brick. Once I pass the brick, I'm going to take this out, though, because I don't want to use this uh, the same bit to go through the wood. It's not good for cutting into wood. Uh, so let's go back over there. Ah. Red Church Jeff makes this look a lot easier. We're going to go in here, and I already checked. So something really important to do is check inside the house. Make sure you're not going to drill right into a power line. I've actually done that before, not on the outside, but on the inside. And it makes some nice sparks and then turns off part of your house. Um, so always make sure you check the other side before you drill. So let's try this out. So I can see that I'm almost through the brick. Uh, there was some mortar that's in the middle because these bricks actually have holes in them. And uh, once I get through the brick, I want to stop because I'm going to switch to my wood bit. Okay, so now I feel that there's a free space because behind this brick wall, there's a small gap between the brick and the sheathing of the house. So now I'm going to hit the sheathing. For the sheathing, I'm going to switch to my wood bit since this is not made for going through there. So I'm using a spade bit. It's probably better to use, um, I have a couple other bits, but not in 7 8 size. Um, better to use one of the ones that has um, more structure to it, but this should work okay. Um, I'm also gonna look in there really quick just to make sure I'm hitting that wood. Yeah, and I can see that there's some sheathing in there. Uh, there's the house wrap, and then behind that is wood. So I'm gonna go straight through here. And then I'm going to check one more time to make sure I'm actually through into the house. And it looks like it. I can see, I can see another stud inside. So I'm going to push the wire through here. Um, I didn't bring anything to blow that out, so I'll just use my mouth and try not to breathe it in. <laughs> Come with me. So let's try getting this wire through here and see what happens. What are you hitting? Oh, I see. It's this part, this little guy. This little rubber piece is getting caught. So let's try to bend it. Uh, 
Ah, oh, no. Okay, oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, get in there. Go, go, go. Okay, so we got the cable in. I'm gonna go ahead and feed in all 70, 80 feet. I don't know how long this is that we got left here. And now I'm also gonna put another drip loop down here. Um, like I said, the drip loop is so that when there's rain coming in, you don't want it to drip down the cable straight into your house because even if you have a good caulk job or a good grommet, uh, there's a chance that some of the water would leak in through there. Uh, so you put a drip loop down here so that the water, anywhere that it hits on this cable, is gonna run down to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll secure the drip loop up here with another screw. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna caulk up this hole. It seems like most of the directions you find only really care about people with vinyl houses, not with brick houses, so go figure. I got this wire run all the way through my basement. I actually made my own grommet because I couldn't find a 7 8 inch grommet or even anything close to that size at Lowe's or Home Depot, at least nothing that would fit my wall without a ton of modifications. So instead I bought a rubber plug, I drilled out the middle of it, um, I cut it in half with a coping saw, being careful not to cut my finger in half as well. Then I put that in around the cable and then I caulked it. I used white silicone caulk, but it would have probably been better with clear or brick colored caulk. Uh, but I punched that cable down. Then inside the house, I ran over two joist bays because there's a run that comes all the way to my main home run that comes to the network setup over here. So I ran the cables down. I put in some uh, electrical cable hangers because I'm actually going to be building out that part of the basement in a year or two, maybe sooner, I don't know and uh, those will come in handy when I'm running some electrical lines up in the joist bays away from the ceiling. So I ran the cable all the way over here and surprise, surprise, SpaceX actually picked almost the perfect length. It's, um, I, I don't have space on my little board here of not well put together networking equipment. Uh, so right now I'm gonna set it on top of this very flimsy stand, but I'm gonna plug everything in up here and uh, for, for the short term, <laughs> short-term meaning probably for a while. Uh, this will be plugged in right here and I just realized that Dishy has a three-prong cable and this little network UPS is only two-prong. So I could, if I were being sneaky, lift the ground on it, but I'm not going to do that. All right, and here is Starlink's power brick, which you've seen before. Uh, so here's Dishy's power connection. All right, so we got our white light there. Power is going out to Dishy. Uh, next up, I'm going to use SpaceX's router. You can actually use your own router if you want, but for now I'm just using theirs. I plug that in, and I still hate the design of this thing. It's, it falls over just by touching it, basically. I'm also plugging in this Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi 4, and I put my internet monitoring setup on it. I actually have a blog post that you can see in the description that describes how to set this up, and I'll probably do a future video talking about how to set up your own internet monitoring Pi along with Pi Hole, so definitely subscribe if you want to learn more about that. Plug that into the Pi's Ethernet port. If you're gonna measure your speed performance on your internet, you definitely wanna use a wired jack and not wireless. And like I said, this is supposed to be a temporary setup. We'll see in a few days, weeks, or months, how temporary this actually is. But I have it all going. What I'm gonna do now is start monitoring Starlink's connection. I'm gonna use it for a lot of different things. I'm going to see if I can do YouTube streaming on it um, and how well that holds up. I'm gonna see if I can upload files, uh, do cloud backups and things like that, and compare it to my cable internet, which is running through this box. Anyways, please subscribe. And until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. I'm rethinking wearing this flannel shirt today. Yeah, if the gutter comes off the house, I think there are other problems <laughs> that we'll have besides me worrying about Dishy. I should let you know that I have no idea how this footage is gonna turn out. This is the first time I've ever used a GoPro on a head mount. So I don't even know if it's pointed the right way. Ow. Aren't you not supposed to walk under ladders? Now this is the fun part getting back on the ladder. Always step on the top rung of your ladder, because that is safe. 
Come with me.